Hello everyone, welcome back to the 10 Awesome Facts segment. Today we'll be taking a look at Street Fighter's Chun-Li, one of my personal favorite characters of the franchise. So, without any delays, let's begin. Number 10, Character Inspiration. The design for Chun-Li was inspired by Tong Pu, a villain from the Strider series. She is the team leader of the Winds, a martial arts trio. Now, I'm not too familiar with the Strider series. My first time seeing Tong Pu was in Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes, where she's a part of the Striker characters. So since MVC1 has Chun-Li as a playable character and Tong Pu as a Striker, you gotta team them up together, cause it's art! <laughs> Plus, she's really, really helpful against all opponents, including Onslaught. Number 9, her original color. The main color you'll always picture Chun-Li sporting will always be blue. However, did you know that she was originally meant to have orange as her primary color costume? The very first version of Street Fighter 2 the arcade game included Chun-Li with the original costume in her character select screen and when she wins and loses. They corrected this as soon as they ported the game to home consoles like the SNES and Sega Genesis, including the next versions that would release later like Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, and they even included it as a selectable alternate color for Chun-Li in Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers. Just press the medium kick button when selecting her and there you go. One last thing to note about the original color palette that she had is that they may have corrected it to be blue for her winning and losing shots as well as in the character select screen, but they didn't change it for her ending. Well, for one of her endings. And look at that. Even up until the final version, that being uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, she still throws her original colored outfit in the air instead of the iconic blue outfit. Number 8. Cameos. As you might have already known, Chun-Li made a cameo appearance in Final Fight 2, appearing in the first stage where you can see her in the background enjoying some ramen noodles. But that ain't the only cameo she's made. You can find her in the first Breath of Fire game as well. Then in Breath of Fire 3, she makes another appearance along with Sakura. In the game Saturday Night Slam Masters, you can find her within the audience. In Mega Man 9, she portrays a news reporter. And in the Tokyo stage of Street Fighter 3, New Generation and Second Impact, you can find her in the background as well. Now, it is her, right? There are more familiar faces in this stage as well, but we'll talk about those later in a separate bit. Number 7, the Pachinko Game. In 2008, a Street Fighter Pachinko game was released in Japan. Only this game's main character was Chun-Li. The game is called Chun-Li ni Makase China. But, uh, but wait a minute, can we say she's the main character when pachinko machines are just slot machines? Meaning there's no actual gameplay? Eh, I guess it counts since they threw in cutscenes and even an anime-like opening where we see Chun-Li defeating fighters left and right. Number 6, a relationship with Ryu. There's a Street Fighter 2 comic published by Malibu Comics that released back in 1994. The story concentrates on what happened after the tournament was over. We see how characters have changed from before and after the tournament, but what we also see is Chun-Li and Ryu in a relationship. But for some reason, Ryu doesn't think it's a good idea to be together just because she still wants to get revenge on Bison for killing her father. Number 5, Chun-Li's partner. Po Lin is Chun-Li's friend and partner at her job as an officer of the Hong Kong police force. In the academy, she was the reason why Chun-Li would try harder than usual because Po Lin was a very competitive partner. She had lost her parents due to being in the crossfires of Shadow Gangs, so she was determined to get revenge on Bison just as Chun-Li would do the same after her father Dorai was taken by Shadow as well. Number 4, Chun-Li vs. Morgan. The S of comic known as Street Fighter Legends Kami comes with an interesting encounter between Chun-Li and a character from a whole different franchise, Morgan of the Darkstalker series. Their encounter was an introduction to a legit crossover comic series that would later release called Street Fighter vs. Darkstalkers. Number 3, Chun-Li vs. Mai Shiranui. China got their own exclusive SF Comics. They made a comic series based on the crossover game SNK vs. Capcom. Just like the KOF Manhua collection, the illustration art is too good. However, just like with the KOF Manhua series, a lot of their fights consist of both opponents spamming godly ultimates rather than throwing combos and, you know, fighting like in the game. But not all of them, luckily. Just most of them. <laughs> Anyways, there's a part where Chun-Li gets to fight against the perfect opponent for her, Mai Shiranui of the Fatal Fury and KOF series. 
To my surprise, not only did they fight without spamming ultimates, but we also get to see a winner, instead of the usual, a tie. I know, right? Can you imagine that? We get a winner! Number 2, Evil Chun-Li. If you haven't seen my video on the Street Fighter 2 anime, I highly recommend you check it out, and of course the series itself. Because one thing they also included was an evil Chun-Li. But luckily, for this evil version of Chun-Li, she only has his little chip stuck on her forehead. And that can easily be removed. But regardless of how she gets mind control, it's cool to see that they included it in the anime series. Especially since they made her fight against Guile. Number 1, Shadow Lady. Shadow Lady is Chun-Li if she was forcibly infused with cybernetic parts by Shadow Lu's technology. She first appeared as a secret character in the first Marvel vs. Capcom game, and as you can see, she's a darkened palette swap of Chun-Li. But she does perform some unique specials like the Miracle Drill, or how she can launch little missiles out of her back. <laughs> Damn, like what do they do to her? If you want to select her, you gotta start by highlighting Morgan, then press up, right, right, down four times, left, left, up four times, right, right, left, left, down, down, right, right, down, down, left, left, up, up, left, left, down five times. Good God, <laughs> what a nightmare of an input. You do not want to get that wrong. You can also unlock her by beating the game with Chun-Li, then at the character select screen, she'll be underneath Gambit's picture. But if you want to fight that secret character, it's a hell of a process. You gotta get the first attack for every single fight in an arcade run, Finish four of them with a crossover attack, and the last two with any type of ultimate. Has anyone actually pulled this off, I mean, without lowering the difficulty or changing the number of rounds to one? Cause I'm sure you'd want to go up against her in a balanced match with the right difficulty to put that opponent to the test, right? Write down in the comments if you've ever managed to face off against her without cheats or handicaps. In Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 and Street Fighter V The Arcade Edition, they bring her back as a costume for Chun-Li, but she does not perform her unique specials as Shadow Lady. In SF5, she was a limited time boss in an extra battle event called Pursue the Mysterious Mech. One more appearance she made was in the Card Fighters Clash game series, specifically SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters DS, which released in 2007. That's it for the video. Thank you all for taking the time to watch this video, and if you truly enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content from this jabroni. I cover lore videos, facts, movies, and game reviews, all based on my favorite franchises such as Resident Evil, The King of Fighters, Mortal Kombat, Celebrity Deathmatch, The Mask, Dragon Ball, The Terminator, TMNT, and more. I'd like to give a very special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. This video is for you and I hope you like seeing your name at the end credits of this video. And if you too would like to see your name at the end of a new vid, be sure to join my Patreon where you also get to receive exclusive videos and updates such as new art panels for my Resident Evil Outbreak comic that I'm working on. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video and remember to have an awesome day.